constable. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, no, would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? You don't want to arouse attention. Evident. But why not? There are enough police on this train as it is. If there were more, they'd only get in each other's way. I can assure you that I'd pack every seat in every carriage of this train with police, if it were a matter of deterrence. You're saying you don't want to scare off potential thieves? Ah, you're laying a trap. That would explain why it's just me and not the army, Miss Patty. All the same, I can't comment on your speculation. <laughs> your deductive powers leave much to be desired. I think we'll get along fine. You. you won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country. And I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Not so bright, but stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? Oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa, it was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway.
wrap the apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. in the mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape of the world. The one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at a reception in the Egyptian Museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the